in the name of Jesus. We are gathered not because of any man. We've come to gather once again because of you. We pray that you have your way this morning. As your word cometh forth, move in your power. Do what you are able to do always. And all glory and honor shall be given back to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Give him a mighty clap. Please receive that. This morning is a special service. We are going to unveil our residence pastor for today. Amen. Amen. So as the church grows today, we unveil to you the residence pastor of this great ministry. And the resident pastor will be working from Monday will be his off day because he has a wife and a family. But from Tuesday, 7 a.m. to 5, Tuesday to Friday, He'll be in the office between 7 to 5 every day. So the church must do its best also to put in at least an allowance rule. So anytime you walk here, you can see a residence pastor. Anytime, any day. You have a challenge, you come here, you meet a pastor to pray for you. Oh, is he a good one? Then let me hear your clap. You have any grievances or any problems? When you come, the resident pastor will be there. If it is beyond him, he will bring it to the authorities. You are not clapping. So, let me preach quickly. Then we move into that side. Amen. Amen. And today too, we will unveil unto you the hierarchies of the church. We are growing. And we must know. Every head has an ear. Every ear has an eye. Every head has a nose, and it has a mouth. Then they all combine to make the head. Then you come to the neck. Then you come to the main body. These things are not just something God did. In every church, there should be a head. There should be the neck and there should be the body. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. We love all of you for the great work you are doing to push this ministry forward. I can tell you we can only enlarge and become better. The higher your aim and the faster you grab it. Holy Spirit, we thank you. As we preach your word this morning, flow, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Last week I started by giving you some powerful tips for the year. And I said last week that you can't just enlarge 
There are things you must do to enlarge. As our team is divine enlargement or God's enlargement, people just don't enlarge. So last week I said, put God first in all you do. I said, number two, change the way you think. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Number three, I said, be the doer of God's word. Because if you throw God's word away and leave anyhow as you want to, you will not get the result you desire. And I said, write down the vision. What you want to acquire. I said, write it down. And as you write it down, you fulfill it. Because you keep looking at it, I've not done this, I've not done that, so you keep pushing. So you need to write down your vision. This is what I want to do this year. And as you write it down, you can accomplish it. And the final thing I said last week was that take actions. Everything you are doing, if you don't take action, you can't get any result. So I just preached to those who were not in church last week. God bless you. So today's own. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah. But I have written, I have not seen, nor yet, neither have we entered into the heart of man. The thing which God has prepared for them that love me. You see, eyes have not seen, and ear have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. So number one thing to do if you want to enlarge this year love God. Tell somebody for me, love God. Be a God lover. Love God. When you love God there are certain things he has for you. There are certain blessings God has for you. The eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. In another word, nobody knows about the blessing that God has prepared for you. So the witches and the wizard don't know, so they can't attack it. The, the people who want your downfall, they don't know what God has prepared for you, so they can't attack it. If you are a God lover this year, I see you enlarging. Come on, I see you enlarging. Come on, I see you enlarging. Tap your neighbor and say, be a God lover. Love God from your heart. Love God with all your mind. Love him with all your might. Some of you, you claim you love God, but you love your husbands more than God. Anything you love more than God, God will kill it. Anything you love more than God, God will destroy it. I'm telling you that if you love your job more than God, that job will go down in seconds. Because God don't want anything to be loved more than Him. Tap your neighbor and say, anything you love more than God, He will destroy it. So be careful not to love anything more than Him. Whatever you are using as an excuse for God, even on Sunday morning, I did this because I didn't go to church. You are loving that thing more than God, so God will destroy it. 
Listen, those who love God, all things work for them. Write it down. Those who love God, all things work for them. A man like Joseph was a God lover. The brothers plot evil for him. But the evil they plotted end up promoting him. Can I announce to you? Whatever they will plan for you this year, it will work for your good. God will use it to promote you. God will use it to lift you. Come on, if I hear you, I'm a receiver. A man like Daniel was a God lover. They put him in the lion's den to die. But because he loved God, God shut the mouth of the lions. This year, any lions that they will open their mouth against you, God will shut their mouth for your sake. God will shut their mouth for your sake. If only you can be a God lover, you walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. No evil shall touch you. No evil shall touch your children. Come on, if I hear you, I'm a receiver. They that love God, all things work for their good. Yes, she said, I said, if you love God, all things work for your good. So eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of any man. What God has prepared, prepared, look at the word, prepared for those who love him. Can I assure you? God has prepared a blessing with your name on it this year. God has prepared long life with your name on it. God has prepared good health with your name on it. God has prepared promotion with your name on it. God has prepared financial breakthrough with your name on it. Can I announce to you? God has prepared good things for you. All you need to acquire it is to love him. Give him a clap. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandment. Yes, you can say, what God me So if you love God, it will be easy for you to obey his instructions. If you love someone, the youngest says, someone claim I love you three days. You've not heard from the person. Please cut off that love. You, you can't love someone and not hear from them. Just a day. Through a force. Just a day. A day. Hey. The whole day without hearing from my wife. What? What are you talking about? No, 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 no. no. Even when I travel, I'll, I'll keep calling. I keep calling. Can I video call? Can I see your face? Why? I love it. When you love God, you spend more time with Him always. This year, God will open you up for good. Come on, God will open you up for good. So be a God lover. If only you love Him, He will enlarge you. I see nine people, you will enlarge this year. Number two, Exodus 23, 25. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. Exodus 23, verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And ye shall learn thee thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from thy beast of thee. Mm. Verse 26. There shall nothing cast thee young, nor be bound. In thy land, the number of my days I will fulfill. Amen. Number two, for you to enlarge. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. You shall serve 
the Lord your God, that He will bless your bread, that He will bless your water. Wait me, let me talk to you. Two things that take your money. Your bread. Some of you are millionaires here. How many believe they are millionaires here? Let me prove it to you. If you spend 50 CDs every day, times a year, on food, on food, times a year, times two years, three years, four years, you would have been a millionaire. Did you hear what I said? What is I'm telling you the truth. But God said, I don't want you to stress on what to eat and what to drink. You just sent me and I'll bless your bread and I'll bless your water. I promise to you this, this year as you serve the Lord May he give you bread always. May he give you water always. May he provide for you. May he provide for your children. You will never lack. In the name of Jesus, say the amen and receive it. Serve the Lord this year with all your might, with all your strength, with whatever you have. With your resources, serve the Lord. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. In another word, you will not lack. I pronounce to you this is the year that you will not lack any good thing. Because the Lord shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. The higher your heaven, the faster you receive it. Tap someone there and say, if you can love the Lord and serve the Lord, he will bless your bread. He will bless your water. In another word, you will not use all your money on bread. You will not use all your money on water. These two things are very important in a man's life. Don't drink water for three days and see what will happen to you. But the Lord said, I will supply you water always. And I will supply you bread anytime you need it. If only you serve me. Another important point in that verse is I will take sickness away from among you. One thing that is wasting people's money today Church. is sickness. Can I announce to you? You will not waste your money on sickness this year. I don't know who I'm talking to. You will not waste your money on sickness this year. You will not waste your money on sickness this year. Every hidden sickness in your body, from the crown of your head to the source of your feet. Let the sickness disappear. Let the sickness disappear. Let the sickness disappear. Come on, receive your healing. Rise up and say, I will serve the Lord. And he will take sickness away from me. Give the Lord a mighty clap. These scriptures are very crucial. And they are very important. If only you will love me. What I've prepared for you, no one knows about it. If only you will step me number two, I will bless your bread, your water, and I will take sickness away from you. Listen, you can work hard, gather all the money. One sickness can wipe everything. One sickness can destroy all your accounts and reduce you to a beggar. So if God says, Save me, 
And I'll take sickness away from you. Then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like you went and picked a maid from the village. Then you told the maid, serve me. And I'll see you through school. If the maid comes and does not serve, Talk to me, madam. <laughs> Will you see her through the school? No. Why? This is with condition. Some of the blessings of God come with condition. God does not just bless everybody. No. It comes with a clause. If you do this, I will do that for you. So when you serve God and serve Him well, sickness is not part of you. Come on, I'm pronouncing sickness is not part of you. If you are in this house, you are serving God, I prophesy, let the little sicknesses in your body disappear. The higher your heaven, the faster you grab it. Rise up and say, I shake sickness out of my body. Out of my body, I shake sickness off. I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. And he shall roll away all my sicknesses. Give him a wonderful clap. Please sit down. This year, I want you to move from a, just a hearer of the word and become a practical Christian. I feel like I Those days are gone that you just hear the word and go and sit down. We are in the time that you must, when you hear the word, you become the practicality of the word. Don't preach love and walk in hatred. Don't preach peace and be a violent person. Walk in the word. Accept it. God's words have been tried, tested, and they are sure. And God said, if you serve me, because you are wasting your time on me, you are wasting your money on me, you are wasting your resources on me, God, I will also make sure I will protect you there are no sickness, no sickness, no sickness, no sickness, no sickness, no sickness will come near you. This shall be your story. Your amen is with this shall be your story. This shall be your story. Lift up your hand and say, I will love the Lord with all my heart. With all my might, with all my strength, say I will I will serve the Lord as long as I live, as long as I'm breathing, I will serve the Lord always. Give him a clap. Don't take serving God for granted. Like Buffing and coming from your house to church is no waste of time. You are serving God. There's no, there's no time wasting in the church. If somebody, oh, you are, you are wasting your time, it's a lie. We don't waste time. We are serving God. And as we serve Him, you take sickness. Do you know how many people are lying in Kolebu right now in pain? Do you know how many people in accident, accident ward? Do you know how many people are going through some heart surgery? Brain tumor, whatever. Some people even in this country, they have to fly them out. Don't follow other things and live serving God. See, see serving God as your eh, first priority. And I tell you, He will keep you away from sickness. Many have said, Oh, because of my job, I don't have time. The day sickness strike, all the customers, all the jobs, the people you are chasing, they will look for another client. 
They will look for another box. They will look for another person. Your company that you are using as an excuse, I don't have time to serve God. The day you force it, they will replace you. So it's better I have time and serve God. So that he can keep me away from sicknesses. No wind of disease that hit for your children this year. Hey, hey, hey! Corona killed a lot of people. We that are serving the law, we are still strong. We are still alive. I prophesy to you, no wind of disease, no wind of sickness shall come near your dwelling. You shall be strong. Rise up and say, I will serve the law. And he will keep me away from sicknesses. Give him a clap. Don't take this worst light. I've seen millionaires become poor people because of sickness. One day they took me to Dansoma to pray for a rich man. This is a man who has more than seven forest bureau in this country. And the kind of hotel he didn't have in front of the house. He had stroke. And that day when I went there, they placed him, his own house, mansion, they placed him, they placed him in a corner. In a corner. Somewhere. And the children said, we don't have time to take care of you. So they went and hired somebody who will be taking care of him. Remember, he wasted all his money, all his time, everything on those children. Listen to me. Sickness can bring disgrace. Serve the Lord. He will keep you away from it. You are clapping good. Everything we do on earth is being recorded. That is why Revelation will tell you, and they brought the books. They said they brought another book. We have only one book of life, but we have books for record. All your life. Everything is being recorded against the day of evil. So that when you refer God, He will come through for you. Serve the Lord. Can I pray? You won't die young. No obituary for you. No gone too soon for you. Church, are you here to no gone too soon? No water shock for you. Rise up and say, I reject all. None of my nice pictures will be used for obituary. Say it will never happen. Because I serve the Lord. Give him a wonderful clap. Sit down. Sit down. Number three. For you to enlarge. Don't joke with your tithe. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with your tithe. Don't joke with it. Your tithe. Your tithe. <laughs> Anytime we are preaching about tithe, carnal minds. Things that the church or the man of God needs money. Tithe goes beyond money. Even your time, 24 hours, eh? two hours, 14 minutes every day is for God. So every day of your life, 24 hours, give God your two hours, 14 minutes. Spend two hours, 40 minutes with God every day of your life. That is your tenth of your time to Him. 
Then we come also to Malachi 3, verse 8 to 12, quickly. Listen, your finances were large. If you are a tight payer, don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. Quickly, quickly. Will a man rob God? Yet, he has robbed me. But he said, But he said, Wherein have we robbed thee? Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. In tithes and in offering. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. You have robbed me in tithes and in offering. So, if you are robbing God, how can you be blessed? How can you enlarge? Squandering your time, God sees it as robbery. What does not belong to you? You are squandering it, so you are robbing me. Some of you, God will expect you to give some offerings this year and he will give you the money. You will still squander it. God said you are robbing me not only in tithe but in your offering. How much you give to God as an offering. Listen, if somebody is not taking notes, eh, how will he know that you are robbing him of his money? Before someone will come to his business and say, you have robbed me in this business, it means that he has counted everything. He takes stocks. How many people take stocks for their jobs? Can I see your hands? So if your seller is stealing you, you will know. Why? You, you took stock and you had all the records. When I was going to town, I have eight sardines. Now I came, it's four. How come? Then the seller said, I didn't sell anything. You have the right to argue and call the police on that six man. God said, I'm sitting in heaven. I've checked my records. Before you came from your house to even drop an offering, I know how much is in your account, I know how much is in your pocket, and I know how much you took out, and I know how much you gave to me. That is why, as a Christian, let me teach you. The best way to give to God and feel happy is to prepare your offering Saturday. So in your heart, you already know how much you are giving. Now that you come to church every time, then you see people put their hand in their pocket. Their, their fingers know all the colors. God said, if you are not faithful to me in your tithe and in your offering, you'll be working hard. You'll be using it to pay doctors. You'll be using it to do unnecessary things. Can I pray for you? Receive grace. Come on, receive grace. Come on, receive grace. Be faithful in your tithing this year. If every year you omit your tithe, this year, dear, from January to December, make sure you are a tight payer. No matter how little it is. Somebody said, Papa, because my tight is too small, mostly I don't want to pay. I said, No, that's the most difficult. That's the most, that's the most stupid talk. Pay the little. God will see your faithfulness and give you the large. Once you are paying the little, God will see your faithfulness and He will bring you the bigger one. Can I pray for you this year? Your tithes remind God. Anytime you are in lack, to bring back to you. There's a connection between you and God. 
Can I pray for two people here? This year your finances were large. Some of you every year you are counting twice. You are working hard to pack money. We don't want to pack money. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he has no soul. The blessing of God, oh, when it comes on your business, it will explode. And one of them when God can explode your business. It's for you to be a faithful tight bearer. As you do this, I see you enlarging. Come on, I see your finances enlarging. People will ask, how did you make it? You tell them, I just paid my tithe. And the Lord did the magic. Can you give God a clap? Ye are cursed. Ye are cursed. With the curse. With the curse. For you have robbed me. For you have robbed me. This year, don't rob God, please. If you rob God, he will curse you. Let me ask. If you are cursed, can you do well? Anything that is cursed doesn't do well. Anything that is blessed, do well. How many people don't want the Lord to curse them this year? Tap your neighbor and say, be a faithful type. Baby. You are working in an office, the moment they pay you, your expenses are not the first thing. You take God's type first. If you, let me shock you, if you can't be faithful with 10% with God, there's no money you can manage. You can't manage. God is only teaching you management. But if you can remember always, Lord, this is your 10%, this is your 10%, then all your money you can always arrange well. If you are clapping, receive grace. None of my children will be cast this year. Because I have just preached the truth. The next. Bring all the time. Bring me all the time. Into the storehouse. Into the storehouse. That there may be meat. That there may be food. In my house. In my house. Listen. I keep saying this and I repeat. The only money. The only money in the church. Pastors have access to. That he can eat so is the tithe. The offering is not for the pastor. It is for the church. If you are clapping, you can do God knows. We we'll use AC. That's why when you are coming to my house, don't come empty hand. So that what we contribute, we can buy lights and use AC. So if the pastor is eating the offering, how can we buy lights? How can we buy fun? How can if, or if something is bought in the church? How can we do it? If somebody has a problem, if somebody has a problem in the church, how can we help the person? So we keep the offerings down to help those people. That is why if you are in need, you don't have to call your pastor and be, Pastor, can you borrow me two thousand? Where is he going to be? Where is the pastor going? Where is the pastor going to get the money from? Because the church money is not for him. Oh, I know this. So you are not clapping. That's the truth. That's the truth. Many people for a long time think church money is for pastor. No. And all the churches that the pastors are consuming the money, go and see. Some of them are 30 years, 40 years. They can't do anything. Now, 
So when you don't pay your tithes, number one, you are keeping your pastor hungry. He is praying for you, but you are keeping him hungry. Because the only money he has access to is the time. So God said, bring the food time that there may be food in my house. So no time, no food. Mm. If you are clapping, do Now that we are going to have a resident pastor which we unveil this morning, this young man will be in the church Monday, uh, Tuesday to Friday, every day, all his life. Do you expect him to drink water and sleep? No. So God made an arrangement so that we will be here always praying for you. Our assignment as men of God is to pray for you two for seven. Your business will move on. Everything about you will move on. The job of a pastor is to pray for his members. When you see me praying, I'm not praying for myself. I'm praying for all of you. So that you will make it. Bring the tithes. We can also eat. Did I explain? Yeah. So tap somebody and say, if you don't pay your tithes, you are keeping your pastor hungry. Be a good tithe payer. Give him a wonderful clap. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So bring in all the food tithes that there may be meat. The NIV said there may be food in my house. And prove me now. Prove, prove me now. For somebody to say, prove me now. In another way, test me and see. Say yes, the Lord of hosts. 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 If I will not open you, I will not open you the windows of heaven. I will open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. And pour on you out a blessing. So there is a blessing I can pour out, except you are a tighter. Yes. There's a blessing I can give. It comes with condition. Amen. Amen. When you are a tighter. I will open the windows of heaven. Pour on you a blessing. Uh -huh. There shall not be room. There shall not be room enough. Tap your neighbor and say, What a word. I will bless you that you not have enough room to contain it. The blessing become too much. That all your rooms will be full. You still be looking for rooms. So when you want to overflow of abundance, you must be a tighter. This year, somebody's bank account will be full. Somebody's business account will be full. All this does not come by just shouting amen and I receive. It when comes by being a practical believer. Being a practical believer. As you walk in this way this year, I see God enlarging you. Your amen is sweet. I see God enlarging you. How many believe I'm preaching the truth? Tap your neighbor and say, you have to walk in this way. And it will work for you. Give him a wonderful clap. I'll pour on you blessings that you cannot contain. You won't have room for it. How many of you are ready for such blessings? I pray that it will come on you. I pray that it will come on you. As you walk and be a tighter, 
as you walk on and give God offerings, I pray that it will come on you. The last one I want to talk about. Amen. Amen. Raise an altar for God. Raise an altar for God. 2024. Raise an altar for God. There's a secret why men rise. There's a secret why God bless people. And one of them is what I'm unveiling to you. In every class, there are people who take the teacher's word. Those who throw the teacher's word away at examination, they fail. But those who take the teacher's word serious at examination, they do well. This is just like a class. As you take this work, they will work for you. You will never fail. If you throw it away, 31st will come, you will still be the same. These are the word of God. Let's walk in practicality of the word. Can we all read one go? This one, I want all of us to read. Everybody, everybody read it. One go. And all power of air thou shalt take unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering, and thy peace offering, thy sheep, and thy oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Who wrote this? Why did you Is it me? <laughs> talk to me. Is it me? This is God talking here to Moses. Listen, God is a spirit. He doesn't move with flesh. Flesh and spirit has nothing in common. So for a spirit to do well with flesh, there must be an altar. There must be an altar for the spirit. So that the spirit can communicate through the altar to the mortar. So an altar is a place where the immortality meets the mortality for divine conversation. An altar is a place where divinity meets humanity for spiritual transaction. Without an altar, no spirit can operate in the earthly realm. Whether God or Satan, they can't operate. Except someone raise an altar for them. Because the earth is for flesh, not for spirit. That was why there's no time to enter. When I mention the scripture, you can write it, you go home, you check it. That was why the first day Noah. The first person who raised an altar for God was Noah. According to Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, 22. Write it. We will not quote it. We will not, we will, we will not put it on the screen. Noah raised an altar. God smelled the aroma. God repented. Then Genesis chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. Abraham also raised an altar unto the Lord. Then Genesis 26, verse 25, Isaac also raised an altar unto the Lord. Listen, the word he came to Moses, he didn't know this. He was only walking with God. Moses didn't know. God came to me and said, Moses, I want to bless you and your people. But 
an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. Raise for me an altar. Sacrifice on the altar your burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep, thy oxen, in all places where they call my name, I will come unto thee. I will do what? Please give me the NIV. I will do what? I will come to you and bless you. In another word, you will not pray for the blessing. I myself, because you raised for me an altar, I know what to do already. I will come to you and I will bless you. As you raise an altar for God this year, I see the Lord blessing you. Your amen is too weak for me. Make an altar of earth for me. Make an altar of earth for me. And sacrifice on it your burnt offering. Sacrifice on it your burnt offering. And fellowship of your sheep and goats and your cattle. Today we don't say sheep, we don't take gold. And then you put the You bring the money to God. As an altar sacrifice. I think next time they will raise an altar here for everybody. How many are ready to raise an altar? Next, next Sunday we will raise it. You bring your communion and you bring your oil. One oil, one communion wine. Then a sacrifice. Equivalent to your age. So if you are 40, maybe 400 cities. You are 20, 200 cities. You are 29, 290. You all raise an altar. You hear what I said? Altars are in levels. Altars are in levels. And that is the least. So you use your age. I am 36. So if I look at my account and I have money, I can use 3,600. Lord, I'm raising an altar for my life. You brought me to 36 years. The next 36 years ahead of me, secure it. He will hear and do it. How many are ready to do that? So I may not remember to say it again. Next Sunday. No, one more sorry I send there. Wow, me spirituality. Some of these spirituality things. I won't force you to do it. No, 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 no. If you are not led to do it, don't do it. If, but if you know and you believe in the scriptures, you must do it. And this year, some of you, you will see the best blessing of God forever. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. Unto, unto me. And I will come to you. And I will bless you. Let me finish with this. First Kings 3. Verse 4 and 5. Solomon went to the altar sacrifice. To prove to you that what God told Moses in Exodus happened. Really, please. The king went to give you to offer sacrifice. For that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered, offered a thousand men offering on that altar. On that altar. Do you see the word altar there? Oh, please talk to me. Do you see the word altar there? Yes. Please talk to me. Do you see the word altar there? Yes. What did God say? An altar you shall make unto me. Solomon located the altar, went to the altar, sacrificed on the altar. Fast. In Gibeon, God appeared. What? He told Moses that when you raise the altar, I will come to you. So when Solomon got the altar, God appeared to him because 
because he is the God of his word. He speaks and he acts on it. He is not a man to lie. This year, I see God coming to bless you. Hey, I see God coming, coming to you. I see God coming to you. I see God walking into your business. I see God walking into your life. I see God walking into your shop to bless. That night, when Solomon raised an altar, God came to him, asked for whatever, and I will give all to you. And I love, I love the verse 12. Verse 12 and 13, I love that song. I have done according to thy words. I have done according to thy words. Uh -huh. I have given thee. I have given thee. A wise and understanding heart. You ask me for wisdom, I've given it to you. Wise and understanding heart. So that there was none like thee. So Solomon, because you raise another for me, there will never be any like you. You are going to write exam. Don't just go and sit at the exam hall. Raise an altar for your exam. You cut the whole class. You stop the whole class. Why? You are not the one writing. There is a God behind your hand. There's a God holding the pen. One guy came here 31st. He's the son of the house. He is in Cape Coast University. He said, Papa, 31st, I came to sacrifice on the altar. And I told God that by the time my result come out, may I do well. When I checked the result, he sent it to me. He had five A's. How many people saw it? I showed it on Friday or night. He had five A's. Can I prophesy to you? As you raise an altar for the Lord, this year will be the best year ever in your life. Hey, this year will be the best year ever in your life. Go home and practice this way. They will open you up this year. Enlightenment is coming. You will enlarge on the left. You will enlarge on the right. You will enlarge on the front. You will enlarge at the back. There are people sitting here, I see enlargement. Your amen is weak. I see enlargement. Words and practice them. They will work for you. The last scripture, 2 Samuel 24 25. That one is on the altar. And David built the altar unto the Lord. David built. Ah, this, this scripture said they are so deep. What is it about altars that all these big men, all these big men in the Bible keep raising altars? As the year, as the year is going, people have raised altars against your life. When you raise an altar for God, God will crush those altars. All the witchcraft, they operate with altars. All the fetish priests, they operate with demonic altars. The church also operates with godly altars. So those that know how to service the altar, that is why... That's why an altar is not an altar is not a plain place. An altar is not a plain ground. An altar is a serious place of encounter. Of encounter. There was a day we were doing all night three days. What did God reveal to you about this altar? Tell them. 
Give him the mic. They are making trouble for all time. Who know? They who know all time so catch up. We came to all night. He was sitting here. As if he was dozing off. Then he saw. Here became like a big copot. Then I saw fire, literal fire. It will go up. Then it will come back to the copot. It will go. It will come back to the copot. Then God told me, oh, "Here is an order." If you are clapping, do. You see, what he saw simply means that there is literal fire on this altar. An altar is a place that is burning. Day and night. The prayers you are praying, fire is consuming it to heaven and bringing it back. I wasn't surprised he saw fire because our God is a consuming. When you check through the Bible, every time, any day, all the sacrifices they gave, you see, you hear that fire came to take the sacrifice. Fire came to lick the water on the sacrifice. Always it is fire. It is fire because God himself is a consuming fire. There is God on this altar. If you can attach yourself to this altar this year, your life will never be the same. Next Sunday, next Sunday I'll go deeper on the altar issue. Because it is something a lot of Christians don't know. They don't know if you are in challenges, you are in difficulties, you are in tough times, things are hard, things are hard. You don't need my office, you need the altar. You alone can come and lie on this altar, cry to God, God will hear you. So the Lord and David built an altar. Up to the Lord. Offered. Then offered sacrifice and peace So the Lord was intrigued the land. And the plague stayed away from Israel. There was a plague that was killing. David raised an altar, the plague stopped. Any nonsense going on in your life, this year we'll raise an altar, that nonsense will stop. No, amen this week, I said that nonsense must stop. This year I made up my mind to show you a lot of things. I made up my mind to reveal a lot of secrets to you. And they that walk in it, they will always be blessed. Always. 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 These are not normal words. This is more than receive your visa. So if you want to enlarge number one, what must you do? Today's sermon. Love what? Number two. Number three. Number four. Raise an altar for the Lord. Give the Lord a mighty clap.